So one of the comments on one of my previous star video star tools videos was asking for me to explain why I use a star mask before loading the color module and then using the sample function. So the aim of this video is to talk further on the color module itself and explain the reasoning behind this. So as we know, star tools has got a nifty feature which tracks the data of the image and this tracking um, allows us or allows star tools to process the illuminance, which is the detail and the chrominance, which is the color of the image. Um, and it can do this process and separately depending on the module. So by tracking the data, um, the colors can later be reproduced within uh, the color module without requiring a non-linear stretch that other tools uh, such as GIMP or Photoshop require. And this um, helps bring out the colors or tones of an image. So with the workflow um, up to this point, the image looks um, gray or grayscale. However, the goal of the color module is to achieve um, a good color balance across the image that represents the color ratios that were recorded within the original image um, before processing within star tools. So before I move on to my workflow um, that I use um, within star tools and the use of a star mask within the co color module, I'll explain the default ways the color module can work. Um, and I'll also go over one or two other ways um, that the color module can work without the mask. And then finally, I'll explain the mask process and, and you'll see why I do that. So if you've watched my previous video of Orion's Nebula third party data, um, I'm really continuing in this video from around the 11 minute mark. So everything previous I do in that video, such as the auto develop, the wipes and the crops, et cetera, are pretty much the same up to this point. Okay, so when we load the image into the color module or launch the color module, the module asks us to create a mask if we haven't got one already set, the mask is empty. So in this example, I'm just gonna use fill mask. So that takes the entire image, creates a mask for it. And uh, the color module um, applies a constant color across the entire image. And Star Tools does this by, I guess, some behind the scenes analysis and it sets the red, green, and blue bias parameters um, are automatically set. So as you can see here, they are one, one, and one. Um, and the histogram in the top left corner here uh, shows the, the balance of those three colors. So it's, uh, it's generally pretty accurate and, and looks good, um, but the only problem with using a, a full mask and then going into the module is that if the image has any chromatic aberrations or any channel misalignments or issues across the image, then those are kind of like magnified or averaged across the entire image um, and could offset the color balance. So that's not what we, what we really want. Um, so there's two ways to get around that before I show you the star mask reason. Um, and the first one is to use this max RGB button. And it kind of gives us a, an, an inverse image uh, of the picture. And you can kind of see where there's a lot of red bias, blue bias, and a little bit of green bias. And using the um, reduce bias sliders here on the bottom right, um, we can affect the red, green, and blue individually. So it looks like we've got a lot of red in that image. And if I increase the red bias a little bit, you can kind of see there, um, it removes a little bit red, but then we'll get a little bit more blue, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll remove a blue, we'll get a little bit more green and we're backwards and forwards like this. And we can click back to normal and we'll see the adjustments that we've paid, uh, made. But the only problem with this is that we have made these adjustments based on the calibration of my monitor. Now, my monitor is not calibrated at all, um, so I can't accurately say that the red, the blue and the green um, are represented or, or calculated as a representation. This is just based on my eye and based on my judgment. So 
if I wanted to adjust this way, um, you need to be aware that the, the image might not look the same on somebody else's monitor um, or website, or even if you were to print out the image, um, it might look differently. So that's one way though, by, by going to Max RGB and playing around with the sliders and removing um, too much color, remove a little bit more blue there um, to try and tweak this and then returning back to normal to what it'll look like after those adjustments. So I'm just going to cancel uh, my changes there, go back into the color module. So we'll kind of, I'll, I'll show you a second way around this. Um, we've still got the full mask, as you can see there, it's flashing green to show that. And if you note here, it says click on green dominant area to neutralize. So we've got a lot of green in this uh, object here. And I'm just going to click once on the green and it'll pick that up and process it. And now you can see that Star Tools has balanced everything out, neutralized or removed uh, more of the green dominance. And rather than one, one, one in the bias sliders, you can now see these are a bit more of an adjustment of 1.14, 1.33, 1.24. And that's Star Tools neutralizing um, the green within there. So one of the reasons why it focuses on green, on green um, is that there's not too many objects or places within the, the night sky that is dominated by green. So therefore, I guess Star Tools, you know, tries to remove the green and neutralizes uh, the other colors around it. Um, so that, that looks probably a bit better or more better than, than just the original sam the original loading of the color of the module. Um, because it didn't take any of that green dominance into effect uh, when it was balancing it out. You remember the, the first time round of loading it, it's kind of just averaging everything out. And also if we've got any like bad color balance or aberration or channel misalignment, um, then that that would have been included in, in, in just opening the module, the color module itself first time. So why do we do the star masks? Let's cancel that. So as we know, when the module is opened, it sets the parameters of red, green, and blue accordingly. However, we want this behavior um, only to the areas that we should know should be white. Um, in a way, we are measuring the white point, I suppose, of the image. So the star mask, um, we can or we can exploit the stars through the star mask. Um, and although that, you know, yes, the stars should be white, they also come in uh, all different sizes and temperatures and therefore different colors. But by measuring enough stars, we know that the average color of the stars should be white. So by highlighting the stars, um, we achieve a good color balance um, averaged against the white stars, but also taking into account um, the other colored stars and then this colored balance is applied across the entire image instead of taking the color, color balance initially based on the entire image itself, um, which again, we don't want to do that. So we're taking a, we're going to mask the stars, we'll take the color average of those stars, kind of setting the white point, and that's applied across the rest of the image. So we will make the star mask first. So just going to clear the stop, clear the mask. Auto stars do that creates as our star mask, and you can see that the the green is the mask. That's where we will apply or or use the color and against. Keep that, and we'll just flash there. You can see the mask when we load the color module. Uh, we tell it we want to keep the star mask. And then what we want to do is take a sample across the star mask. So you can see some of the stars have already colored, but we want to take a sample of those, um, which, which sets our um, balance for the rest of the image. But to apply it to the rest of the image, we need to remove the mask. So mask, clear, and then we invert it. And by doing this, we select the entire image and then click on keep. Now at this point, when it returns back, um, I'm not clicking on anything. It's just self-processing 
um, the colours. So that colour balance, which is now applied across the entire image, the colour balance has been taken from the stars or measured from the stars themselves. So some subtle changes here. Um, when we came in originally the first time round, where we um, took the colour balance from the entire image and applied it to the entire image, all the biases were set at one. And then the second time round where I clicked on the green dominant area, that set the biases to 1.1 values. And then obviously this time round, um, just using the star mask, taking the sample and then applying that, um, that color balance from the sample right across the image. You can see here the, the biases have adjusted, um, I guess subtly, but enough to make a change. So on my monitor, I can see that this blue area or the green area is a little bit more, um, I guess, more, more gradient than a, as opposed to a smooth blue area um, that I had before. Um, but hopefully it's just enough to show you or explain why I created um, a star mask in the workflow um, as opposed to just loading up the color module and allowing the color balance to be applied from the entire image to the entire image um, as opposed to creating the star mask and you, you, you're setting the color balance based on the stars um, themselves. I'm not saying you know one way is better than the other way. Um, hopefully you, you understand my reasonings um, but I've given you you know two or three different ways there of just loading the color module um, applying a star mask or not applying the star mask, clicking on a green dominant area um, and see, see which one works or looks the best for yourself. Um, so hope that work walkthrough is enough to understand the colour module a little bit better. Um, and although um, it's a bit outdated with changes in the module itself, I'll add a link to the description of this video um, with the star tools help page which explains a few more processes and options that you can use within the module, depending on what you want to focus on, i.e. adjusting the stars, but without adjusting the other features or the main objects. So the color module is actually really powerful and impressive without having to go near a manual curve or stretch um, tool yourself. Um, so hopefully, um, thanks for the requests to look into this module a little bit further. Feel free to leave a comment and opinions on how you use your module or how you use this module yourself. Um, I'd be interested in reading those comments as well. Okay, thank you very much.